acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. From Matthew's Gospel, the fifth chapter, verses 1 through 12, I want to ask you this question. How many times have you heard people use the phrase, be blessed or I'm blessed? In fact, yeah, every day, you're right. In fact, these words have become the religious way of saying, have a nice day. Amen? Now, I say the religious way of saying, have a nice day, because it's, it's not just Christians that are saying, be blessed or have a blessed day. I've heard people of all religions and all faiths use that term. And when we hear it, or when we say those words to someone, do we give any thought to what we are actually saying? Are we wishing nothing but good things for that person that we're saying them to? When we say, I'm blessed, are we saying that there is nothing but good things in my life? I ask you those questions because I think it's common or natural for us to think or for us to link blessings with everything good. I think that's natural. But as we listen to the words of Jesus in Matthew 5, 1 through 12, we hear Jesus use the term blessed in a way that should be shocking to us. For he shows us that being blessed has nothing to do with things going well for us. In fact, gee, according to Jesus, we can be blessed when everything seems to be going wrong. This passage of scripture is commonly known as the Sermon on the Mount, and this sermon is believed to be the most famous of Jesus' teachings. The sermon begins with what we have come to know as the Beatitudes. Now the Beatitudes are interpreted as blessings. And in essence, Jesus is painting a picture of what it means to live for God and what blessings we can expect to receive in our life as a result of following him. First, he begins by stating, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Heaven, excuse me. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. We just prayed about being comforted, didn't we? Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit, inherit the earth. So, in those verses of scripture, we hear these three things. Poor in spirit, those who mourn, and the humble. Now, poor in spirit means realizing that we in comparison to God's glory. Our goodness, the scriptures tell us, are nothing but filthy rags in the sight of God. So in essence, we cannot compare or even begin to understand just how great God is. Next, he tells us that as we follow Christ, we, we come to realize that the things of the world are not the ways of God. And if the things of the world are not the ways of God, then as we follow God, those things should be troubling to us. Troubling to a point that we become sorrowful when we witness the conditions of the world. Now, a good example of that is what we talked about in the prayer this morning about the, the, the five police officers killing that young man. That troubled us to our souls, and rightfully so. But God is telling us that anytime we see any condition that is ungodlike, it should trouble us to our souls. 
And when it troubles us to our soul, we cry out to God for change. We cry out to God to comfort us and to direct us. But the good news here is Jesus said that those who mourn will be comforted. He is saying, just hold on, change is coming. But as we are waiting, we must do what we can. We must pray and pray without ceasing. I tell you all that all the time. I recall a song back in the 60s and 70s. And I know I'm telling my age when I'm supposed to go back that far. It was a song by the Staple Singers. And I know that, that all of us here that are, are probably old enough to remember the song. The song says, reach out and touch a hand. Make a friend if you can. That is what God is calling us to do. When I say we must do what we can and pray without ceasing. The next teaching is about, I don't know, Camila, you remember that song? You might not be old enough. Okay, all right. <laughs> okay, all right, let's go on. <laughs> the next teaching is about being humble. Now, some of our translations may say, especially if you have King James, it says meek. Now, meek can be dis misleading. Because to some people, meek means weak. To some people, weak means gentle. But the humbleness that Jesus referred to is actually putting the needs of others ahead of our own needs. Now, that's Kind of unnatural for all of us here, including me. Putting somebody else's needs ahead of ours. Now, it's easy for us to do that for our children. But God is telling us that we must go even further than that. We must put others ahead of us. That's a hard saying. Jesus said that those who are meek, those that are humble, these are the ones that will inherit the earth. And every time I hear that scripture, I hearken back to, to when I used to watch the Philadelphia 76ers when Charles Barkley played for them. And when we won his uh, uh, basketball commercials, I think it was for Nike shoes, I'm not sure. Uh, he, he comes out and he says, the meek shall inherit the earth. He said, but they will not get the basketball. And remember that he was called the round mound meat rebound because of his uh, rebounding prowess. And, and he said, if you're meat, you're not going to get the basketball. Think about it. Imagine what those words that the meat shall inherit the earth. Imagine what they meant to the listeners of Jesus. For these were people that were being abused by power. These were people that were being abused by the Roman government. And these words provided comfort. They gave them hope. And it's no different for us today. Even now we cry out for change. Even now we are crying out to God to end the madness that is around us. Even now we are crying out to him to give us peace in this crazy world that we live. Jesus goes on to say, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. So in this, page, in this passage, we see four things that speak out to us. Righteousness, mercy, purity of heart, peacemaking. Now, when it comes to righteousness, he says that we must want it as bad as it feels to need food and water. He said we must hunger and thirst for righteousness. Now, righteousness is wanting things to be the way that they should be for everyone, not just for us. You're not wanting righteousness just for yourself. You want everybody to enjoy God's righteousness. You want everybody to enjoy God's grace. You want everybody to be put in order surrounding the things of God. You want everybody to have what they should have and to be treated the way that they should be treated. That's the righteousness that the scripture is speaking of. 
You want it not just for yourself, but for everybody. Jesus tells us, if we hunger and we thirst for it, we will be filled. Jesus also says, blessed are the merciful. Now there's a really, really good reason to be merciful. Because when we show mercy to others, then God shows mercy to us. You remember he says that if you forgive, then I will forgive. But if you don't forgive, then I'm not going to forgive you. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want God mad at me. Amen? To be merciful means to always have the mindset that except by the grace of God, we could be in the other person's shoe. It always means that when, when, when we are wrong, we're not looking to get even, but rather to remember that we too make mistakes. We remember that we too need to be forgiven. That we all need the mercy that comes from the mercy seat. I remember as a little boy growing up in church that when one of the elders of the church was asked to, to lead the morning prayer, they would come down to the altar and they would fall on their knees and before they began their prayer, they always would say, and it stuck with me as a little boy, they would cry out, have mercy, Lord, while mercy can be found. God wants us to be merciful so that he will in turn be merciful to us. Next he talks about the pure in heart. Only the pure in heart, he says, will see God. Now we know that none of us are pure. None of us are righteous, not on, not on our own account. It is only when Christ dwells in us that there is a bit of pure and righteousness within us. And that pure righteousness that is in us, again, is not us. It's God. It's God that's in us. He says that the peacemakers shall be called the children of God. Now, to be called children of God means that we would be heirs of the kingdom. In other words, that which belongs to God will also belong to us. Isn't that what an heir is? So how do we become peacemakers? How do we make peace in a world that, that's comfortable with war? How do we make peace in a world that's comfortable with violence? A world that's comfortable with, with revenge? A world that is comfortable with suffering? We make peace by seeking to be humble, again, putting others first, and by encouraging others in the way of peace. We live in a world where we will quickly say, well, you need to get him back for that. You need to get her back for that. We do. But Jesus is telling us we should be teaching people the way of peace. But most importantly, we can become peacemakers by pointing people to the Prince of Peace. Now, why these things? Righteousness, mercy, purity, and peace. These are the characteristics of God. So then we must also become, become or take up these, these characteristics in us as we seek to live for God. We can't be called righteous or pure, or we can't show mercy. We can't become peacemakers without embodying these characteristics. Again, these characteristics of God. So Jesus continues his blessing by concluding, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way, he says, they persecuted the prophets 
who were before you. Can you imagine again how strange this was for Jesus' disciples to hear? It may be strange for us to hear this morning. You are blessed when you are insulted. You are blessed when you are persecuted. You are blessed when they say every kind of evil against you. It's strange to hear that. But Jesus quickly reminds them, and he quickly reminds us this morning, that because of him, persecution will come. You see, the way of the world says that if something bad is happening to you, happening to you it's because you did something bad. But Jesus is saying just the opposite. He said, no, if you try to be more like me, bad things are going to come to you. You will be perse persecuted for simply following and obeying God. And how often does it happen? It happens all the time. When you try to do the right thing, they call you crazy. They call you Miss Goody Two Shoes when you try to do the work, the, the right thing, when you try to treat people the way they should be treated. They might even call you weak. It happens all the time. You see, if you live like everyone else, doing whatever you want to do to whoever you want to do, how long you want to do it, then you'll be loved and adored. You'll be called, oh, she's just one of the girls, or he's just one of the fellas. But to live like everyone else doesn't fit God's standards. He tells us, if you follow me, you may suffer. You may suffer for being loving. You may suffer for being holy. You may suffer for being truthful. You may suffer for being good. You may suffer for being humble. You may suffer for being meek. You may suffer for being righteous. But these are God's ways to the kingdom. He's telling us that in order to find true blessings, we must seek Jesus and follow the ways of God. So we seek to be humble. We seek to be pure. We seek to be merciful. It is in these things that Jesus says that we are blessed. Not with the blessings of the world, but with the blessings that come from God. He says to us, our reward will be great. We used to sing a song that used to talk about how it's all right if you treat us, treat me any kind of way. We used to sing, that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. As long as I know I got a seat up in the kingdom. That's all right. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
God has blessed you, then go and be a blessing to somebody else. It goes back to that song again from the staple singers. Reach out, touch a hand, make a friend if you can. You gotta make this world a better place. Amen. Amen. Uh, choir rehearsal, 6.30 Friday evening. 6.30 Friday evening. Oh, y'all got quiet. Are <laughs> 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 there any other announcements? Choir rehearsal. She asked it up here. Who's asking for the choir rehearsal? Here at the church. Yeah, yeah yes, ma'am. Yeah, at the church. Unless we can come over to your house and have it. <laughs> we can come over there. <laughs> you got a piano? <laughs> you know, okay, uh, we'll have it at the church then. Amen. Uh, yes, ma'am. On this Saturday, um, we'll be down at the church, a few of us working hands. The women is always here trying to put together a beautiful. Uh, Yes, that we have for Black History Month. Mm -hmm. And we also ask if, if the women can meet with us, like about 12.30, for a few minutes, just to talk over some plans for next month. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, be mindful that they will be working in the church. So, oh, yes. yeah. Uh, so, may have to meet in the education building so it won't be in the, right. in the way of the construction. So they will be here Saturday? I would think they would be, yes. Oh. Well, it's something to think about. Let us know. Okay. Right. Any other announcements? Well, seeing none, let us stand and be dismissed. God's love.